4 on Fox Sports 1. And catch the race Sunday on Fox. Are you ready? Green, green, green. These drivers put on a great show on every type of track. Driving these cars, banging off of each other. Oh, he gets sideways, beat off the racetrack. There he goes, trying to make the pass. If you're a driver trying to get in, you get little opportunities like that. Watch how hard these guys are going to drive. Checkered flag in the air. Checkered flag there, champion. Welcome to the San Gabriel Valley of Southern California, just a short hop from Los Angeles. Tonight, it's the 22nd Series event for the NASCAR k and Pro Series West, and we're sure glad to be back at Irwindale Speedway. We've had 11 different winners here at this track, and if Greg Persley doesn't win tonight, we'll add a new name to the list. No question this is one of the driver's favorites, and tonight it's the Napa Auto Parts 150 at this gorgeous facility. I'm Ray Dunlap along with Phil Parsons. We'll hear from Bernadette Santacola here in just a few moments and Phil, your thoughts on tonight's action. It's gonna be great here. This is one of the best racetracks on the circuit here. What a perfect night for it too with the weather at 63 degrees, just a slight breeze. Fantastic night for race number two. We started the season in Phoenix and here's a look at the points after race one of number 14. Gorgeous night for racing. Now let's go down trackside and hear from our pit reporter. Here is Bernadette Santacola. It is great to be back here at Irwindale Speedway, guys. We love this track because it always puts on a good show. One of the reasons why, the progressive banking, which you can see here behind me. Now that allows drivers to be really creative. What they do with the creativity, we'll find out. We've seen some intense wrecks and some really close finishes. Ray, Phil, what do you predict? Well, Phil, I mean, we start from 6 degrees at the bottom up to 12, but I love this racetrack just like Bristol and Iowa. If it's got progressive banking, I'm all for it. And it gives you options, Ray. You can run down next to the grass or you can run up against the fence. And these are three of the things we're going to have to keep an eye on. Tire conservation, no halftime break here, 150 straight laps. And you want to be good and aggressive on the restarts. It's easier to pass somebody on the restart than it is later. And you need to know when to go. You need to know when you've saved enough tires and it's time to get to the front. Well, let's get to the front with the guy who was our fast qualifier. All right, guys. Well, in California, the days are warm and the nights get cold quickly. With that in mind, on the pole here tonight, Brandon McReynolds, how do you adjust these weather changes? It's going to be tough. We just try to get our uh, Napa Toyota driving pretty neutral in practice. We know that the temperatures have cooled down, like you said, and uh, hopefully we just don't get too tight for the race. But we'll see. Uh, I know David and uh, Greg have really good cars, too, so it should be fun. Serving tires, a big deal here tonight, too. Yeah, it's going to be really big. I think uh, it's going to be pretty wore out. Try to ride around for about 100 laps and go there with 50. Go. I've never been here, but uh, we'll see what we got with this Napa Toyota. All right, well, on the pole here tonight, guys, Brandon McReynolds, a new addition to the Bill McAnally Racing Team. We'll see if he can stay ahead of the field all night long. Well, thank you, Bernadette. His time was 18.15 in his pole run. That's an average speed of over 99 miles an hour around this tricky track. But, Phil, like he said, you want to save it for the last 50 laps. Yeah, we're not going to see any speeds like that in this race here. These guys are going to be slipping and sliding all over the place. This is the first time we haven't had a halftime break, so all the guys were wondering how these tires are going to last for 150 laps. And, again, as Brandon said, when to go. <laughs> Can you conserve? Who will be the best at that? Well, we'll hear the starting lineup when we come back. Ready to go racing tonight with the Napa Auto Parts 150. Gorgeous night in Southern California. Glad to have you with us as we get ready for race two of the K&M Pro Series West. Bill, 150 laps with no break. This is going to be a challenge for the crew chiefs for sure. Yeah, it certainly is. No, uh, no time to make any adjustments, so they had to guess right. Well, let's get our thoughts before green as we get ready to go. Back to the pits and Bernadette. All right, guys, as we know, there's a lot of factors that go into what makes a driver successful. And it's in this series where they get to figure it out. Drivers and teams work to find that winning combination. A perfect example of that is David Mayhew, who now has Michael Self's former crew chief, Steve Hoygate, in his corner. Now, Phil, I know you can expand on this, but this guy knows a thing or two about winning here at Irwindale. Yeah, Bernadette, he certainly does. He won our inaugural race there in 1999. A great talent behind the wheel as well as on top of the pit box. That's for sure, Phil. 26 cars will make the starting lineup tonight. McReynolds in that Napa race car on the pole. Mayhew beside him, and our only former winner, Greg Persley, rolls off third. You can see Brett Thompson back there in the 11th spot. He has five top five finishes here at Irwindale. More starts than anybody in the field is Jack Sellers, and he'll roll off 24th. There's a look at the entire starting field for our Napa 150. 
Cars will come rolling out of turn number four. They're lined up two by two. Will we see contact tonight? Bernadette brought up a great point with his progressive banking. Give any options, and the green flag is out. See Brandon McReynolds at Napa car on the outside. That is the preferred line around here. Look at three wide already. Three wide coming down the back straightaway. They'll sort it out. Here goes Persley to take a look down to the inside. Mayhew shoots up to the top. Brandon McReynolds trying to hold his line at the bottom. If you're going to make that bottom work, you have to do it early when the tires are fresh. You see Patrick Staropoli already up to the third spot. That peak race car with a good jump at the very beginning. McReynolds and Persley, one, two. Here goes Persley way down to the bottom. Look at that, Phil. He's got his left sides completely below the white line. Yeah, I told you you can run all the way down to the grass here, and Persley does take the lead over here. Now he's going to back back off and allow uh, McReynolds to have the lead back. It looks like the momentum on that high side really paying off for the 16, and he'll shoot by Persley, and here comes Staropoli into second. Yeah, great run early here for Staropoli. Good qualifying effort now, running in the runner-up spot. A couple of Bruncati's cars running side by side right there. The six and the nine. See three wide again, back for the fourth spot. Love the way this racetrack lays out, Phil. Gives these drivers that option, but a lot of the crew chiefs saying you like the high side for the momentum for sure, but if you can get your car to work at the bottom, you can make quick time. See, Brandon led his first lap here in the West Series. He's had three previous starts, all at Phoenix. This is the first West start he's ever had other than Phoenix. Brandon been pretty impressive in the early part of this season. Ran some K&M Pro Series East races as we kicked off the season down in Florida. Saw so Brett Thompson, the 61 car, down way below the white line. There he is again. He was almost below the yellow line. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's running low for sure. Good run early for Anthony Giannone, right now running in this third spot ahead of Greg Persley. The 54 car. Red line signs on there. Good run for Giannone. Talked to him for a long time when we were out at Phoenix. He said, they're really hoping to improve. Last year, they were scattered good finishes throughout the season, but they couldn't keep the consistency. Yeah, has a good run going early. And one thing we're going to have to keep an eye on, Ray, is with all the concern about the tire wear, a lot of these guys up front are going to start conserving tires. Right now, we have Brandon McReynolds leading, Patrick Staropoli running second. We're going to see some guys from the back of the pack, I think, be able to make their way towards the front while these guys are riding around conserving. And that's that's why the concern was without the halftime break. Well, is McReynolds able to conserve, though, when you're out front and you've got Staropoli and Persley and some of those guys pushing you? Is, you know, how, how much can you conserve is the ultimate question. Yeah, that's exactly right. Brandon McReynolds has, has said, hey, I've never been here before, so I'm not sure exactly what to do and how much to conserve. But uh, I think if he stays around Mayhew and Persley, those guys have been here. They have a lot of experience here. You mentioned Persley's a former winner here. If you stay around those guys, you have to feel like you'll be in pretty good shape come the end of the race. Well, when it comes to tire conservation, Greg, one of the masters of that for sure. So we'll keep an eye on that race car throughout the night. Persley still in the top five. McReynolds now stretching out the lead a little bit over car 99. See some two and three wide racing back there. There it is right there. Back for about the seventh or eighth spot. Three wide already. 2048 the times on the cars running in the back. We'll watch it as we go on. You're watching the Napa 150 from Irwindale. It's a doubleheader on Fox Sports 1. First, the Twins take on the Tribe. What a catch! Then, the best rivalry in the NL is back as the Giants face the Dodgers. It's a doubleheader tomorrow on America's newest home for baseball, Fox Sports 1. Know what the experts at your Ford dealer think? They think about tires and what they've been through lately. Polar vortexes, road construction, and gaping potholes. So with all that behind you, you might want to make sure you're safe and in control. Ford technicians are ready to buy. Brandon McReynolds is your leader. Brett Thompson in the 61 putting some pressure on him as he looks to the inside, maybe trying to go for the lead in that Rich Thompson trucking number 61. Here we've seen the top five shuffle here since we went away for break. Persley and Mayhew now have dropped out of the top five in a conservation mode. Jack Sellers has been to the pit area, and we're starting to spread out the field a little bit. Let's go down to the pits and get an update on the leader of the race, Brandon McReynolds. 
All right, guys, that number 16 car, Brandon McReynolds, leading the field here tonight. Talk about family history. This guy is so humble, though. I talked to him earlier today, and he said he really didn't want to mention who his father was and what he did because he's really worked from the ground up to get to where he is here tonight. Impressive start, impressive pull victory here for him tonight. This kid is going to be a contender in the Canon West. Well, thank you, Bernadette. I would agree with that for sure. And, Phil, you know a lot about family heritage. Once you grow up in racing, it's just in your blood. It certainly is, and he's done a great job as we see a great side-by-side -side battle between Brett Thompson and the 61 and Brandon. But, you know, he won an ARCA race at Talladega, did an awesome job, really had a shot at winning the ARCA race at Daytona, ran out of gas coming off a of turn four on the last lap. So he certainly has the credentials. And it puts you in a position to get in some good equipment. And obviously being... In Bill McAnally's race car, uh, that's going to be a good situation. But we've got a heck of a battle for the lead. Thompson putting some pressure on Brandon McReynolds, and he'll take over the spot coming out of turn four, give the lead to car number 61. Yeah, I think it was wise right now. Too early to battle too, so hard. Brandon McReynolds backed off, let the 61 of Brett Thompson go. You can see Ryan Partridge now in the 77 car move to the inside of Brandon McReynolds. Lucas Oil, the sponsorship on that 77. Partridge now coming into second place. He'll take the low line on the track, and McReynolds starting to slip back a bit. We already saw the brake rotors glowing on the 61 of Brett Thompson, and not, not only could that hurt your brakes, but it also is going to increase the, the temperature in those tires, too. And again, tires are going to be so critical when we get down towards the end of this race. Not like you're going to run down to the pits and throw another set on. You've got to manage them for 150 laps here. That will certainly be the storyline we follow throughout the night. You know, Phil, I was looking back through some of my notes. From 2001 to 2007, Bill McAnally Racing won eight of the 11 races at this track, and then Austin Cameron came back and won the initial uh, running of the Toyota All-Star Showdown. So that team certainly knows a good setup when it comes to Irwindale Speedway. Yeah, Austin Cameron has five wins at Irwindale Speedway. Those are some pretty good numbers, so will the McAnally guys be able to pace themselves throughout the course of the night? We'll keep an eye on that. Here comes the 54 coming up to put some pressure on McReynolds. Just watching the crawl there on top of the screen. David Mayhew now is backed up to the 12th spot here in a conservation mode. Greg Persley also out of the top five right now as Anthony Giannone moves to the inside of Brandon McReynolds. MGP connecting rods, the family business for the Giannones, and there they go across the start finish line. Brandon starting to slip back a little bit further. Good side by side work here, but are you are you stressing out the race car? By, by going side by side with these guys. Should he just back off and let him go? I think he should let him go, and I thought that's exactly what he's going to do. A first caution on the racetrack here now. Yellow flag is out. Looks like Greg Rayle may be involved in this in the 07 car. There he is. Got her spun down to the inside. Doesn't look like he made a lot of contact with the inside wall. Got rid of those checkerboards on the hood, man. You know, I was worried about him. Let's take another look at it. You see him right there in the middle of your screen, that blue car. Just gets a little bit loose trying to get the power down on exit. So it doesn't appear that he made any contact with the inside wall. Just a lazy spin down the front straightaway. But that brings out our first caution of the night here. Give these guys a chance to cool off the tires a bit. Yeah, I think a lot of these guys are going to hope for a lot of caution lights to cool those tires down. We're going to take a short break. We'll be back after these messages. You're watching the K&M Pro Series West. It is it's MLB Whip Around. Ready to go back to racing in the Napa Auto Parts 150. Bernadette Santacola in the pits. I'm Ray Dunlap along with Phil Parsons. They're lined up two by two. And out of turn four, we go back to green. Brett Thompson, our leader, chose the inside. Look at Brian Partridge, the 77 on the outside. Two by two back through the field. They start to span out here in the first couple of cars. They've gone back to single file, but some great racing here at Irwindale in the early stages. We're not even quite a third of the way through this race yet, and a bunch of guys putting some serious pressure on up at the front. Yeah, it's great to see some of these names that we don't always see running up front. Brett Thompson is a consistent runner, but we don't normally see Ryan Partridge running up front here. Ryan doesn't have a great number of starts in the series. But he's all over the back of Brett Thompson right now. You mentioned that Brett got a win. He also has a pole in this series. 23 top five finishes. 
in about, I think he's made 125 or so starts. How about the battle for third right there? How about Daryl Haar in the 71 car making his way up to a battle? Brandon McReynolds for the third spot. You know, this is not the only racing he's done today. <laughs> Daryl's been kind of busy. He was over at the big track in Fontana earlier today, ran the NASCAR Nationwide Series event and said, you know what, I haven't had enough yet. Let's go do some more. Let's get 150 short track laps. Were those two tracks are similar? They're <laughs> no. They're both very slippery. Yeah. But speed-wise, well over 205 miles an hour getting in turn one the at big, Fontana. Yeah, the big two-mile over there runs a little different than here, but still some fantastic racing at both. And I'll tell you, Phil, I have absolutely been amazed. The last couple races at Fontana have been fantastic in the Nationwide and in the Cup Series. Yeah, they certainly have. That racetrack is really aged now. That's one of the oldest surfaces we have in the Cup Series, and that creates some great racing. When you slip and slide a little bit in the corners, that makes for pretty good racing. Well, it's not like this racetrack's brand new either. It's got some nice age to it, and again, with the progressive banking, that gives these drivers all kinds of options. Now, we've started to fan out a little bit in the front three or four, but there's still some good racing back through the pack. Yeah, there's the five of Thomas Martin. He was able to get by Brandon McReynolds. There's Carlos Vieira in the 51 car. He's gotten by as well. Persley back to the 15th spot now, Mayhew 13th. We're going to have to keep an eye on those guys, right? 5150 energy drink on Vieira's race car. Followed in closely there. Here, Brandon back now to what is he in about six or seven spot? Yeah, he's backing up. Just again, conserving right now. It's a, probably a pretty good plan. Thomas Martin looks to the inside of Carlos Vieira for that fourth spot. You know it's good for these guys to run up front like this too. Again, it may be premature. We're only a third of the way into this race, but man, it's fun to run up front. Oh, heck yeah, absolutely. And get up there and do some good battling side by side like this group as they roll through turn number two. That was Jessica Brunelli, the 88 car on the inside, that red car. Nothing better though, Phil, than being side by side and showing your wares no matter what lap it is and what race anywhere. It's a ball. It certainly is. See Dylan Lupton in the nine car all the way back to the 16th position. We saw that right front brake rotor on the 61 of Thompson really glowing. He is running into those corners awfully hard. And right now you see he's got a pretty good gap on Ryan Partridge, the 77 car running second. I think if I was Brett right now, I would back off a little bit because you, you, you know you can't get away from them because the caution flag is going to come out and close you back up. You need to save those tires. Five top fives here at Irwindale for Brett Thompson, so he does know his way around this racetrack. Jessica Brunelli has made her way all the way up to the seventh position. Andrew Porter right now running eighth. First start ever in the series for Andrew Porter, but he won three races here to Irwindale in the Sportsman Series last year. I just keep looking back to the middle of the pack, Phil, and I see Persley back there, Mayhew back there. Those guys kind of right in the middle. And I'm just wondering, you know, you've got to keep an eye on that leader coming because Thompson is laying down some pretty quick laps. He certainly is, and I think those guys are just going to run fast enough not to abuse their tires. And you can, you can really see you just don't drive in the corner that hard so you don't get on the right front tire and you try not to spin those tires on exit to, to take care of the rear tires. So, And these guys, Mayhew, Persley, they know what they're doing. They, they've done this before. Now, is that just a feel thing, or are you asking your crew chief to give you lap time so that you can monitor each and every run around this racetrack? I think you want lap times, and you may even have gotten together with your crew chief and said, okay, this is the pace we want to run. Let's try to run this pace right here, and we think we'll have enough tire at the end to really go for it. Good information here as we have spanned out a little bit. Look at this coming up down the front straightaway. There is Rich Thompson, uh, excuse me, Brett Thompson, and he is about to get into some serious lap traffic. Yeah, great battle for the four spot continues here side by side. Vieira, the 51 on the outside, Martin, the five on the inside. And there's Brandon McReynolds, Jessica Brunelli right there behind them. So the 38, that's Andrew Porter. Got to be a Big moment for him making his debut here in the K&N series. What a great racetrack to get your first start at. With a little local knowledge, too. That doesn't hurt. 14 races in the season here in the NASCAR K&N Pro Series West. And boy, what an interesting schedule it is. As they crisscross the West Coast, we go to road courses, short tracks. You bookend the season at Phoenix International Raceway. Well, right now, Brett Thompson has it all his way. He's opened up a huge lead over 
That's 77 of Ryan Partridge. Not even the halfway yet, Phil, and I'm just worried a little bit about the pace that Brett Thompson is setting up here. He he is really continuing to click off very fast laps. Yeah, he certainly is here. While we have, uh, you know, what you would call the favorites of the race right now mired back in the teens. See the crawl going across the top of your screen. Thompson, the leader, then Partridge. Now you'll notice the number 71 says Lewis in there. Why is that? Well, that's because Gary Lewis qualified the car because because we talked about Daryl Hart being over at Fontana to run the nationwide race but Daryl got here in time to run the race had to go to the back of the pack for the start so that's what's all more impressive is the fact that he's made his way to third from the very back of the pack he has been hauling the mail so has Daryl Hart and here goes the yellow flag yellow caution is on the racetrack for the second time tonight and the pace car will come out to pick up the field There's J.D. White, the 35 car. He's had some trouble on the racetrack. He's making his second start. He ran one race last year at Albuquerque, finished 11. Wow, and look at the, the tire tracks there, Phil. That was from the top of the racetrack all the way down, as you can see him sliding through turns three and four. No contact, though. That's the good news. Yeah, J.D. did a nice job keeping that car out of the outside wall. So the 35 will rejoin the field. The W Energy Drink Race car gets a lazy spin coming out of the center of the corners, and we're under caution, and the driver's got to be thinking, okay, it's time for the halfway break. Let's go in and uh, make some adjustments, yeah, that, right? That'd be nice. <laughs> not going to happen, though. Not tonight. Not tonight. It's 150 laps straight through for the K&M Pro Series West. How about just seven of our 26 cars entered tonight have more than one start at this racetrack? Will experience pay off? We'll find out. Tire management will be the name of the game tonight. 150 grueling laps around this beautiful Irwindale Speedway. We've had two cautions and ready to go back to green here. Flagman's got it in his hand. He holds him off. And now the green flag is back out. We're underway. Remember that big lead that Brett Thompson had before the caution? It's gone. Gone. Completely gone. 65 of 150 complete. We're keeping our eye on some of the really good cars that are mired in the middle of this pack. And how will they conserve their tires tonight? And can they do it? And for how long do you do it is the bigger question. It's all the 51 on the inside. Carlos Fierro taking a shot at third there. Didn't quite work out. Thomas Martin may take over fourth. You know, Phil, we mentioned earlier Austin Cameron with those five big wins, but let's give a shout-out to Jason Bowles and Brendan Gaughan. Those are two drivers with three victories at this track, and it's always fun to look back through the history of this division, how many great drivers have been here and how many of them have made their way stepping up through the ranks. Yeah, we've had so many, so much fun during the Toyota All-Star Showdowns that we had out here for a number of years. Some of the best racing ever. Loved watching the late models. Love these big, full-bodied cars. It was really a ball to watch. Yeah, remember, we brought the East Series out here to compete against these guys in the West. That was, that was some great competition, for sure. Brett Thompson's open up about three car lengths over Ryan Partridge right now. Daryl Haar, the 71, hanging in there in third. Brett Thompson with 2,808 laps completed at this track. That's third on the all-time list. So obviously experience paying off for the driver from Idaho. There's Jessica Brunelli, the 88, moving to the inside of Patrick Staropoli in the 99 car. That's a battle inside the top 10. Sunny Valley smoke meets on Jessica's race car, and they're getting some good exposure tonight. See that peak sponsorship on that 99 car. You know, Patrick won the peak stock car challenge last year. Second round of that is going on right now. I was talking to Michael Waltrip the other day, and they had hundreds and hundreds of entries for that. And Patrick Staropoli was the guy that distanced himself from everyone else. He got an opportunity to run a couple of West races last year with a fifth and a sixth place finish. And as you mentioned earlier, ran several of the East races early on in the season. This is his first West start of the year. You know, Phil, I have to be honest with you. Whenever I heard the announcement and saw the press release that this kid had won, I said, who's he? Yeah, who he is is a Harvard graduate. He graduated Harvard summa cum laude, and now he's in his second year at the University of Miami in med school. Now, I got a 2-5 at Bowling Green, so I'm assuming summa cum laude's a lot better than that. That's what they tell me. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> he is an incredible young man and doing a great job in this race car, and obviously there were a lot of criteria 
in that uh, stock car challenge that Peak put on, and this was the young man who won it. Patrick Starpoli we're talking about as we watch Jessica Brunelli just ahead of him. There's some great racing here all over this racetrack. It is kind of hard to even tell where to look because they're side by side in every corner. Almost halfway through this thing now. There's Daryl Haar, the 71, trying to chase down Ryan Partridge in the 77. That's a battle for second. Next time by, I'll be halfway here at Irwindale. We need a quick break. Out front, it's car number 61, and he's led almost 50 laps. NASCAR on Fox Sports 1, live from Texas all weekend long. Catch Spring Cup practice tonight at 6 and race day Sunday at 1.30. Coverage begins today at 4 on Fox Sports 1. And catch the race Sunday on Fox. This is the computer ICU. Do you have to try to conserve those tires to go 150 laps without a halfway break? Well, we know Brett Thompson's not conserved anything. Nope. He drove to the front there, took the lead around lap 26 or 7, and has been out front ever since. Can he hold that spot, though, Phil, or has he pushed it too hard too early? Well, you have to wonder because we know that Persley and Mayhew have all the experience here, and right now they're racing around the 15th spot. So, you know, they you have to feel like they know what they're doing, and if they know what they're doing, yeah, then Brett Thompson may be used up too much. May have used up too much car. If they're if they've got the right strategy, that means someone else doesn't. That's for sure. There's a good shot of Persley right there on the inside. You know, normally, Phil, we hear all about track position. Let's get an update on that situation. Let's go back to the pits, and here's Bernadette. All right, guys, as you said, it's so interesting to see that number 26 car of Greg Bursley hanging in the back, but I talked to him earlier today, and he said he's going to do that. Here at Irwindale, you've got to save your stuff, and you've got to wait and be patient, especially with the young field of drivers that he's running around tonight. So he said around halfway point, maybe a little past, He's going to really go after it. So expect it to be down to the wire here tonight. Greg Persley, he's going for it now. And as we look at the lap times, Phil, he is actually starting to pick up the pace a little bit. So it may be time for Persley to say, I want to inch my way towards the front. Yeah, we're close to the two-thirds mark of this race. You see right there he is, the 26 car with David Mayhew, the 17, right behind him. Patrick Staropoli, the 99, is in front of this battle. There's Brandon McReynolds right there. Go by. Brandon's just on the tail end of the top ten. And we saw the nine of Dylan Lupton right back there behind that group, too. One of those other cars that may be pacing themselves. See a little damage on Persley's car, though, Ray. Look at the left front fender is basically gone on that 26 car. Wow. wonder if that happened on a restart. I didn't notice that. He's been so far back in the pack, we really haven't seen him much. It doesn't take much for a little accordion effect on a restart to get that damage. See Mayhew make, taking another spot off of Lewis Terrell in the 74 car. Meanwhile, Brett Thompson, again, with a pretty huge lead up front here with 51 to go. I love the way he works it up high there in the dark stuff where all the rubber is on the racetrack. He's got a preferred line up there, keeping lots of momentum. I think right now Brett Thompson would like to see some rain or something like that. Although I, there's no rain forecast, and I don't think there's any clouds in the sky, but it, it, would, it would work for him. Two-thirds of the way through here, so we're in the final third of this race. 50 to go. How late can you wait is my ultimate question. See, Greg Persler now, he was running 15th just a couple laps ago. Now he's made his way up to 12th. Going to take a shot at the 38 of Andrew Porter. Mayhew right behind him in that 17 car. You know, Phil, we see the 6 and the 9 on the racetrack. They have a very similar look. But I have to pinch myself every once in a while because Derek Thorne pops out to me as the driver of the 6th, and he won the championship a year ago. And this year, James Bickford is getting a shot at big-time stock car racing in that race car for Bruncati. And I love what Bob Bruncati does. He gives drivers an opportunity. He had Jason Bowles. They won the championship. Jason moved on. He had Derek Thorne. They ran two years. Derek won the championship. He's moved on. Now he's given James Bickford a shot. James has some pretty good credentials for a, a youngster. He was a track champion at Roseville Speed, Wall American Speedway in Roseville, California last year. And you know what? That's what this series is supposed to do, is give those drivers an opportunity. Great to see this young man behind the wheel of that. And, of course, his teammate Dylan Lupton got a big win. There's James right there, right? Running up in the top ten. 
See the 54 Giannone in the middle of the racetrack. There's Carl Har, the two on the outside. And boy, Scott Ivey was way down to the inside. These guys are dicing and slicing, trying to get to the front. All you need to know is here on Fox Sports Live. Kevin Durant's hot streak has everyone impressed. How do you find a prodigy? You look for your... Is it go time yet? We'll find out here shortly. We're watching the Napa Auto Parts 150. It's been the tire conservation project tonight, and we're closing in on 35 to go. Yeah, Brett Thompson right now with over a two-second lead over that 77 Ryan Partridge. Daryl Haar, the 71 car, maintains the third spot. I'm not sure, Phil, if this race were to stay green all the way to the end, if the cars that have been conserving can get up to Thompson, let alone to pass him. Yeah, that's the key is you don't want to wait too long. You don't want to let too, you know, because everybody's sliding around here. Everybody's tires are worn down, even the guys that we're really conserving, like Persley and Mayhew and Staropoli. All the drivers on the radio saying it is a slick racetrack. Temperature playing to their hands tonight, starting to cool off a little bit. There's Dylan Lupton, the nine car, side by side with Persley in a battle for 11. Those guys are rubbing fenders. Persley backs off just a little bit, or did he? Oh, and contact the left rear. Yeah, Lipton didn't quite have Persley clear. Now he gets sideways. Persley's going to jump back to the inside. And Persley sliding that car sideways, Phil. That's not good tire management. Yeah, it certainly is here, but uh, he doesn't want to get too far back here with just outside of 30 laps to go. You see Mayhew is in front of this battle. He's already moved by Persley and headed towards the front. Boy, what a tough break for David Mayhew. The first race of the season goes to a racetrack where he's won before. Very high confidence level in a great race car and goes in there and the water pump falls off the thing. On the first lap of the race, no less. And yeah. that's what really hurts you in the points when you have a bad finish, when they have a big field of cars. It's really hard to overcome that, but they've got a great team with Portengay calling the shots now. Steve McGowan, Portengay involved in the ownership of that team and look for those guys to contend. Michael Self was a contender oh, week in and week out, and we've got one going around. That's the number six of Bickford gets spun out, coming out of turn number four. He was racing with a 54 Giannone. Not sure if there was contact or not. But that's certainly going to close up the field. That two-second lead Brett Thompson had has gone away. And boy, did Bickford lose a lot of spots there as he spun out. He's going to try to roll it back up through here, but it did appear there was contact. Let's take a look at it. Here they come out of turn number four. There's a big group of cars. Yeah, it looks like there might have been a little bit of contact. That was Mayhew, the white car on the outside, but looked like Giannone in the 54 and Bickford in the six made a little bit of contact. There it is, another view right there. Can't really tell for sure if there was any contact, but they were close. You know, Bickford had a rough day at Phoenix, and tonight he'll line up behind the pace car. He is down a lap because the leader went by. We'll see if we can get a run to the checkers when we come back to Irwindale. Brett Thompson a little bit slow on that restart. Partridge has a lead now on the outside. Mayhew goes way down to the bottom of the racetrack, hugging that yellow line, trying to come up and get a position. He's right there with Brandon McReynolds, but to the high side, Thompson is going to lose the lead. How about Staropoli on the inside now? He's taking over the second spot side by side for a moment. Oh, Brunelli's around. Jessica Brunelli gets spun out right at the start finish line, but the great news is no contact to the inside wall. That will bring out the caution. That's the pick and pull Ford that got a uh, little bit of contact, it appears, on our restart. And Partridge was our leader at the line, so they revert back to the previous lap, and Partridge now has the lead. Ryan Partridge at the point. Patrick Staropoli running second. Everybody trying to manage tires to the end of the race, and Jessica can't get her number 88 rolling, so she's going to lose another lap. Yeah, tough break for her. She was running up in the top 10. But the car will not refire. She's right in the middle of a huge pack right here. Looks like there may have been a little bit of contact from one of the Brunelli cars. Looks like the nine of Lupton. Yep. Coming up off that corner, she got a little bit loose. Down to the inside was Persley, I believe. And then Lupton's contact just spins her around right at the flag stand. Yeah, there was some contact with Persley after she got sideways, too, so we'll have to keep an eye on that, see if Greg may have a problem. 
This race car has uh, been beat up on just about every corner. We're going to try it again. Bernelli gets to the back of the field. 99 to the inside. 77, Orion Partridge to the high side. Can one of these drivers get their first career win in the K&M Pro Series West? We'll find out. Green back out. Good jump by Staropoli on the inside. He goes all the way down to the yellow line. Brandon McReynolds was our pole sitter tonight at over 99 miles an hour. He's managed his tires. Can he get up there to get his first win in the West Series? It's go time for these guys. You see Mayhew all the way down on the bottom. You can see how flat it is down there. Four, Four wide. wide. Coming out of the corner. Look at this action at Irwindale. Here we go with just 13 laps to go. Star a pulley to the high side. He's going to take over the top spot. Somehow he got switched over to the high side. Partridge was on the high side. Star Poli got it, and he used it to take the lead. Guess what? The number 26 is in the picture for the win. How about that? That's a surprise. Here comes Persley. Well, he knew what he was doing. You see the 61 of Brett Thompson down on the inside. Here comes Ryan Partridge to 77 now to take over that third spot. Here goes Mayhew three wide on the bottom. Mayhew to the bottom, right in the middle. It's Thompson, and on the outside, we've got a three wide battle in there, fender to fender. They ran out of room there. All three cars were trying to get to the outside. See Brandon McReynolds lined up behind Mayhew. Mayhew's going to be able to clear that side-by-side -side battle for third. Ryan Partridge just doesn't seem to be able to hold the momentum. Of course, they were pushing and banging there, but... Coming off that high side, it doesn't seem to work, but he does this time get by the 61. We've got a smoker on the front stretch. We're going to stay green right now. It looks like Giannone, the 54, looks like his engine went away. Hopefully there's no fluid on the track. Inside 10 laps to go. Great racing action here at Irwindale Speedway. Patrick Staropoli to the front in the peak race car. Yeah, he's got to look in his mirror, and he sees Greg Persley, one of the biggest winners we've ever had in this series, a winner at this racetrack. Right behind him. Former champion. Can he put the pressure on inside? Ten laps to go. Persley way to the bottom of the racetrack. David Mayhew now. He saved his stuff. These two guys ran mid-pack for most of this race, and now they're making their way towards the front, running second and third. Side by side for second. Here goes Mayhew to the bottom, trying to come up off of that group. Persley has the momentum that time. He'll stay on the high side. You really use your stuff up there, trying to make that move on the bottom, trying to make that slide job work. Persley right now has that spot. MMI communications on that 17. I'm still getting used to a white race car. I, I think I like it better all, all orange. Right now he's going to like it better in victory lane if he can get up there. If he can get by Persley and go up there and challenge Staropoli. Run out of time. These guys are using their brakes hard. Coming to six to go this time. Racing for second place side by side. Veterans, Persley and Mayhew. Mayhew can't quite hold the line. You see Persley squeeze him down a little bit. He doesn't want to let him use all that banking. There's a little more grip way up high, but Persley doesn't want Mayhew to get up there. And Staropoli starting to stretch this out, Phil, with these guys racing side by side. He is gaining on second place. Well, Mayhew has him cleared now. Mayhew has a second spot. Well, you do see that fender on the left front of Greg Persley's car riding on that on that tire just a bit a little bit of smoke that time off the corner yeah probably cost him a little bit of downforce too you see brandon mcreynolds now hangs in there in the fourth spot in that napa car does mcreynolds have anything left he ran awfully hard in the first 25 laps of this race staropoli now stretching it out see the nine of dylan lupton he's in a pretty good spot now running in the top five boy staropoli waited till just the right time or got a lucky break or something but whatever it's done once he got that car to the front of the pack that number 99 toyota has been on a rail you know we talked about being aggressive on the restarts he was aggressive on that last restart it worked to his advantage he got the lead and these guys persley mayhew mcreynolds they may have said hey we waited too long to go Absolutely. The nine of Dylan Lupton, the Sunrise Ford right there in the top five. But look at that gap from first to second. Two laps to go, and they're coming around off of turn number four. This time, as Patrick Staropoli comes down the front stretch, he'll get the white flag. That means the next flag's going to finish this thing. We will not have a green and white checker, but what a great story. Patrick Staropoli won the Peak Stock Car Challenge, and here he is maybe on the way to victory. He rolls it through turn number three. He's gone down the back stretch. The lead is pretty significant. If he gets through lap traffic here, he'll come across the start-finish line and we're in his first race in the K&M Pro Series West. Now, that's a pretty good story to take back to med school, don't you think? Wow, and a trophy to go with it.
What a nice job. And Bill McAnally gets back to victory lane. This car is fielded by Bill McAnally. And, Phil, we used that stat earlier that they had won 8 of 11, but the last victory for McAnally Racing was in 2007. Tonight, they'll celebrate again here at Irwindale. Patrick Staropoli's won the Napa 150. Mask. When I fall asleep, I dream of flying. I dream of being a race car driver. Monumental night tonight as a Harvard grad and a med school student has driven his number 99 peak Toyota to victory lane. Patrick Staropoli is there, and as they get ready for the celebration, let's send it down to victory lane with Bernadette. The second race in the k and Pro Series West. This guy is a Harvard grad, a, a current medical student, and now a winner here at Irwindale, Patrick. Oh my gosh, how exciting is this for you? Your first win. This is the most amazing feeling in my entire life. I can't even believe we won this thing. Um, I'm not even supposed to be out here, man. I won a contest last year to get this ride with Bill McAnally, and we finished fifth in our first start. We thought that was going to be it, and he gave us a five-race deal this year. Uh, we've been running really strong all year, just haven't had all the pieces of the puzzle come together, and tonight they did, and we, we won the thing. I can't even believe it. You're very, you're, you're a talented driver, and I know Bill McNally is a great team to have behind you. Now, this is exciting. You have momentum going to the next four races that you have. Yeah, definitely. We have one more race right now up at, uh, in Iowa in May, and I'm really looking forward to that one. And we're just running like this, and hopefully we'll get more races. Keep coming after that. All right, guys. Patrick here. We'll let him celebrate with his teammates. Winner here tonight, Nerwinell. Congratulations to you. Phil, there's nothing quite like a victory lane with a first-time winner. And this young man has certainly shown he's got a lot of talent. But Ray, it shows that there's talent all over this country. As he mentioned, he won a, he won a contest to get this ride, and he ends up in victory lane. Good run for Giles Thornton. Brings home a six tonight. Brett Thompson and Ryan Partridge faded a bit. As we look back through, you see in 15th, James Bickford, who got a spin, but he did get back on the lead lap. See, back in 18th, Jessica Brunelli. Tough break. She got spun out late. Couldn't refire the car. Loses a lap. Let's hear from the driver who finished in second. That would be David Mayhew. All right, guys, in second place here tonight, a contender in the series, David Mayhew. I know you were saving your stuff, but what was it like out there tonight? Well, we had a great idea and uh, just fell back 150 laps on these tires at this track. It's getting a lot more wore out than it used to be, so really tried to pace ourselves. Patrick and Greg did the same thing. We were all back in the 10th to 15th range, and it's a little dicey back there, so... But well, when it's time to go, I mean, we decided about lap 75, 80, it was time to go, and we couldn't go anywhere. So it was just a tough, good thing we had a couple restarts there at the end, let the stuff cool off once. Then as the tire, the better tires really showed. And can't thank MMI, Steak and Grape, Steve Portengay, all the guys at the shop. They do, Chris, they do awesome work during the week. And to come back uh, right there for a while, I didn't even think we were going to get a top 10. So have a couple good restarts and uh, got up here on the podium. So that's a good night. Well, guys, this is racing. David Mayhew, who decided to save his stuff and leave it for the end, but ends up in second place. Not too bad for the second race in the K&N West Series. Well, thank you, Bernadette. And obviously, after that tough start at Phoenix, that'll help him out a bit. David Mayhew up to ninth in the points, just 22 back. Former champion Greg Persla now with a seven-point lead. Hey, that's a great segue. Let's hear from the driver who finished third. Well, guys, a guy we expect to see in victory lane tonight because I know you wanted to win here at Irwindale. But, Greg, what was it like racing against these guys tonight? It was good. We, uh, we got up there at the beginning, got a bonus point for leading a lap. That's pretty important nowadays with the point system the way it is. And we tried to drop back and just save uh, 150 laps here at Irwindale Speedway. There's a lot of laps on the tires. And uh, once we got back there, we got back there about 14th, and I'm like, oh, I don't know, Jerry, my crew chief, I don't know if this is a good idea. It was going to get rough getting back up through there. But um, Gene Price Motorsports, my guys do a great job. We had a good car. We were just that much too free to get off the corner and get a good drive to get up there. So we made it up this far. Car's a little beat up, but uh, it's all in all, it's a good points day. Got to thank all the fans for coming out to Irwindale Speedway. We're finally back here again. I just hope we can come back here for more races. I agree with that, Greg. Great action tonight, and glad to be back at this beautiful facility out here. One of the staples in the K&M Pro Series. Westville, your thoughts on tonight's action? 
Well, I think we had some comers and goers. We had the guys with a strategy. We're going to go up front and see if the stump will last. And we had guys that like Persley and Mayhew, Staropoli, they went towards the back of the pack to say, okay, we need to save stuff. And it looked like the guys that went to the back had the advantage at the end. Brett Thompson may have been a winner tonight if this thing could have stayed green, but that's not how it played out. We saw lots of side-by-side -side racing, but tonight the victory goes to Patrick Staropoli, his first win in the K&M Pro Series West. For Bernadette Santacola and Phil Parsons, I'm Ray Dunlap saying thanks a lot for joining us. Tune in next time as we go K&M Pro Racing from coast to coast.